Okay, well, unusually for a review, I'm gonna say it straight away. This DAC punches well above its weight. One of the things that really interests me about reviewing hi-fi products is that you either get a product that just screams quality and performance, maybe something like a DCS Bartok or a Core Dave DAC, and that's fantastic, but that costs a decent amount of money. Or you get a product like this RME DAC that just does a lot more than it should at its price. And everybody loves value, don't they? If you read the article on my website, you'll notice that I hinted at whether this particular DAC is a cord cutis killer. In fact, I probably did quite a bit more than that, but that's by the way. In this video, I'm asking the question, is it and how do we get on? I've got here a flight manual. Well, it's more of a checklist for how to fly a Robin HR 200 light aircraft. It's about the size of a thin pamphlet. And then here is the manual for the RME DAC quite involved. The thing is though, this is a pro audio product, so it's gonna be involved and you don't need to learn everything from the start. This is a reference guide, so you can come back to it. So as you can see, the RME ADI2 DAC FS is quite a small little box. You've got on the front face a usual on off switch, it's got a nice LED that goes around the outside so you can tell whether it's on or not from this light. You've got a quarter inch headphone jack, high power headphone output. You've got a 3.5 millimeter, very low noise IEM output, which RME have designed for using with IEMs because let's face it, a lot of people listen to those types of headphones nowadays. Obviously, volume control in the middle, You've then got various function buttons around a high resolution OLED display, which shows off a five band parametric equalizer. And then here you've got two dial knobs, which are for treble and bass. And these also function in the display to turn to select different options these dials produce a subtle effect and aren't they welcome on hi-fi nowadays looking at the back of the case you've got quite a conventional setup you've got a usb input usb 2 input that's so that you can take input from your pc laptop server rune server you've then got coaxial rca input you've got an optical input and then you've got left and right phono outputs to your preamp integrated and you've also got balanced outputs as well. So obviously you can use this just as a DAC with these outputs or you can use it as a preamplifier into your powered actives or your power amplifiers. This DAC is obviously a DSD type. It can handle PCM high res formats up to 768 kilohertz and DSD 256. No MQA though, but to be frank, quite a few aren't. In my tests, I used it with some ATC SCM40A active floor standing speakers, three-way speakers. And I also used it with my excellent PMC 2523s and Cyrus Signature amps as well as a Hi-Fi Man J2 electrostatic headphone system, to also some Totem Kin Play speakers. If you're a newbie to what DSD, PCM or sample rates is, go to my website and you can check out a basics article called Streaming, which explains lots of what I'm talking about here. I'll post links in the description. This DAC does have a fixed level output setting if you're using it into a preamp or integrated amp. So it's set at its maximum gain. But ordinarily the gain is set using the volume dial because it has an auto ref 
difference feature, which means that as you turn the volume up and down, it reduces or increases gain to maintain the same signal to noise ratio. In other words, the dynamics in the music are maintained. You hear little relay switches kick in as you turn the volume within certain bands. One thing that is really neat about this particular DAC is its ability to adjust for room effects and if you know deficiencies in speaker response by using its parametric equalizer. This ability to tweak the room response is so important. So you could correct for too much treble or too little bass or whatever. This DAC even has dual equalizers to account differences between hearing acuity of individual ears. All the settings are adjusted for whether you're using headphones, IEMs or the line out to your hi-fi, which is mainly my interest in this review. This particular DAC is characterized as being accurate with detail, very balanced with treble and bass, and just doing everything you need. The fact I can say it is a chord cutis killer is because it's doing everything the chord does sound-wise and you know for its function as a DAC, but it's doing it at a lower price. It's doing it with a better feature set and that counts for an awful lot. So not only all the adjustments you can make, the headphone usage, the balanced outputs which the core doesn't have, but it's matching it on sound quality. Okay, it might not have the cutest milled aluminium case, but then does everyone want such a case in their hi-fi? You know, do we really need the looks of you know milled aluminium? Does that really matter? Particularly because this product is very well made anyway. It's a little bit more mid-centric, so it's chucking more mid-range out at you. It's also got thicker, denser bass weight. So in this way, it sounds a little bit more natural and more, dare I say it, inverted commas, hi-fi than the cutest. The cutest is chucking everything out at you in its extremes. So you get a thick encapsulation of the music projected as a whole and really forced out there at you. This RME is more about putting everything in its place and just being natural. Making that comparison, I would then say that the cutest is a little bit more wider sounding. It's got a wider sound stage. I'm taking preference out here. So I'm comparing these two DACs as to what they do sonically. It's really what you prefer most. But the point is, is that because it does it, this RME does it at three or 400 pounds cheaper, it is just so much better value for money. And in that sense, I think it's the cutest killer. Clearly, if you're going to prefer the chord sound over this DAC, then fine, but that accounts for your preference. And if you do want a DAC around this price, let's be really, really quiet and make sure we don't tell the distributors that this is punching above its weight because this product should really be at a much higher price. £1,500, maybe even £2,000, it's that good. The only thing I would say about this DAC, which doesn't take away from its sound quality, is targeting this product to a audiophile market as well as their pro audience. They need to make the manual a little bit simpler. If you want to ask me any questions, please do. You can go on YouTube, you can go on Facebook, you can go on my website, you can email me. You can email me on the comments field, wherever you want, and I will answer all questions I get. And if products stand up above their weight, I'm not afraid to say it. And I think I should say it. You've got to look at it from the perspective, you know, how many people would think the same as me if they came across this in their living room, taking out preference. Sometimes I think reviewers get that mixed up. They mix in preference to be able to apologize for products that don't perform as well at the price. And personally, 
I think hi-fi has got to get away from that approach because I think if you're honest with the hi-fi and the stuff that's good will sell, people are going to come back. They're going to trust you. They're going to trust dealers. They're going to trust manufacturers. And there's going to be higher confidence in the industry. So once again, thank you for watching and be sure to hit subscribe.